Tokyo, August 2000. Back in Tokyo, Fumiko called a special meeting of small wings. She shared every detail of her adventure with the members. The sad news came first. With the children around her in a circle, Fumiko told them, in a gentle voice, what they had already imagined. Hana had died at Auschwitz. But I have a wonderful surprise, Fumiko said. The faces of the children brightened. Hana had a brother named George, and he survived. The question started flying at once. Where is he? asked Maiko. How old is he? One boy wanted to know. Does he know that we have Hana's suitcase? asked Akira. Fumiko told them everything she knew, and she said she would work late that very night so that she could write George a letter. Can we send something with it? asked Maiko. The older kids scattered to quiet spots around the center to compose poems. What can I do? Akira asked Maiko. Draw a picture of Hana, she replied. But I don't know what she looks like, he said. Just draw her as you imagine her, Maiko said. And Akira did. Fumiko wrote her own letter very carefully. She knew that receiving it would come as a shock to George. She knew that some Holocaust survivors refused to ever speak about their experiences. She worried that his memories might be so bitter and painful that he wouldn't want to hear anything about Hana's suitcase and the Holocaust Center in Japan. Fumiko had copies made of Hana's drawings and packaged them along with the children's writings and artwork. Then she took the parcel down to the post office crossed her fingers, and sent it off to Canada. Toronto, Canada, August 2000. It was a warm and sunny August afternoon. 72-year-old George Brady had come home from work early and had planned to spend a quiet afternoon in the empty house, clearing up some bills. He was sitting at his dining room table when he heard the footsteps of the mailman, the whoosh of envelopes being shoved through the slot, and the thunk of them landing on the floor. I'll get them later, he thought. Then the doorbell rang. When he opened the door, the mailman was standing there. This wouldn't fit through, he said, handing a package to George. The package was postmarked Japan. What could this be, George wondered. He didn't know anyone in Japan. When he opened the package and began to read the letter, George's heart began to pound. He closed his eyes. He opened them, blinking hard, making sure that what he was reading was real. Was this a daytime dream he was having? The loss of his sister, Hannah, was George's most private and deepest sorrow. He had lived with it for over half a century and had never been able to get over the feeling that he should have been able to protect his little sister. Now, somehow, halfway around the world, her story was being told and her life was being honored. George was stunned. He sat down and let his mind wander back 55 years. When Auschwitz was liberated in January 1945, George Brady was 17 years old. He had survived the horrors of the camp by starting out young and strong, by good luck, and by using the trade he had learned at Theresienstadt, plumbing. When he was freed, he was very weak and painfully thin. But George was determined to make his way back to Nove Miesto, to his parents and his little sister, Hanna. He desperately wanted his family to be together again. By foot, by train, and by hitchhiking, George made it back to the home he loved in May 1945. He went straight for Uncle Ludwig and Aunt Hedda's house. It was the last place where he had known family, love, and safety. When they opened the door and found their nephew standing there, Aunt and Uncle fell on him, hugging, kissing, touching, crying, barely able to believe that George was alive. But the unbridled happiness of the reunion was short-lived. Where are mother and father? George asked. Ludwig and Hedda were forced to tell him the horrible truth.
Marketa had been sent from Ravensbrück to Auschwitz and murdered there in 1942. Karl was killed there the same year. And Hannah? George whispered. All his aunt and uncle knew was that she had been sent to Auschwitz. For months, George nursed the faint hope that somehow, somewhere, Hannah would appear. He searched for her in every young girl's face he saw, in every ponytail that swished by, in every jaunty step of a healthy child on the street. One day, George encountered a teenaged girl on the main street in Prague. She stopped in front of him. George? she asked. Are you not George Brady, Hannah's brother? My name is Marta. I knew Hannah. All of us older girls at Theresienstadt loved her. George searched Marta's eyes for information, for hope. She realized that George didn't yet know the final truth about his sister. George, she told him quietly, plainly, taking hold of his hands. Hannah was sent to be killed in the gas chamber at Auschwitz the same day she arrived there. I'm sorry, George. Hannah is dead. George's knees turned to jelly, and the world went black.